Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of the Norsk Q&A video, which I believe is going to be the last part. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Our first question comes from Hendrik Veerbeek, who asks, Do all Norskan tribes venerate one or more of the Chaos Gods? So, not necessarily. Um, it varies from person to person or tribe to tribe. Some, like the Dragonbone tribe, worship exclusively Nurgle, which is the tribe of the uh, Tentacle Lord, while Wolfric's tribe is devout to all four of the Great Powers. Uh, you know, he's, like, just full-on undivided. Demon Dave asks, What type of marriage ceremony do Norskins have? Are there any marriages between Norskins and non-Norskins? So, we don't have any notable records of how exactly a Norskin wedding ceremony is performed, but there is some information about the structure of marriage itself. Norskin women have it better than one might expect, in that they choose who they marry and hold the power to divorce. However, it can get a tad complicated, as it's not unusual for Norskin men to have multiple wives, especially if he's notably powerful or respected within the community. These wives are responsible for defending their homes when the men go out raiding, and most are competent if not highly skilled warriors. Coming across a Norskin village of women does not mean you're going to have an easy time. Uh, these women, the wives, will take possession of their husband's lands and authority if she, she does not have a male offspring, which has led to a fair amount of female Jarls over the years. Beyond that, uh, Norskin women have a few expectations placed on them when married, such as they have a religious ceremony where they cut off portions of their own fingers when their husband or sons die as an offering for the warrior hags to guide them into the next life, uh, which are basically discount Valkyries. Uh, otherwise, they could uh, wander the lands of the dead forever without being found, so it's kind of a crucial ceremony. Also, they can be held accountable for a crime that their husband committed if for some reason he cannot. For instance, maybe he's too important to the community in a certain aspect, or maybe he uh, isn't around or has passed away, but his crime still needs to be dealt with. So the wife will have to suffer his punishment. The wives are also expected to lead a celebration should their partner die in battle, as mourning those who have fallen in battle is strictly forbidden as they have achieved the ideal death, so the wives are kind of expected to lead the celebration there. Finally, women who are kidnapped during raids from other lands, if particularly interesting or beautiful, will often be forced to wed someone at the order of the Jarl as a reward for various deeds. These will often be the fourth or fifth wife and are little better than thralls or slaves. They don't have a good time or a good life. Uh, as for Norskins and non-Norskins beyond the thrall thing, yeah, there are Norskins who have left Norska and gone into other lands and ended up settling down. It's rare, though, in the grand scheme of things. Our next question comes from Warmongarian. I like that name. <laughs> who asks, How much do other Chaos tribes interact with Norska proper? For example, have the Kurgan or Mung ever tried to ally or attack Norska? So, the Kurgan and the Hung, uh, the Mung, I believe, are actually a Norskan tribe that live on the more eastern side of the continent. Uh, but the Kurgan and the Hung are utterly despised by the Norskans, and all three of them fight brutal wars against each other quite often. No mercy is given or expected in these conflicts, and the tribes will only ally under the mightiest Chaos Lords in the name of wider conquest. But... Long story short, no, they don't get along. Next is Ethan Fox, who asks, What differences are there between the normal Chaos Gods and the versions that the Norskins have? So, generally, the only notable difference is the Norskin versions tend to be simplified or divided up into multiple aspects. Overall, though, these other forms aren't different from the actual Chaos Gods, as they have, the gods themselves have nearly infinite forms and names. So it's not that they're different, it's more of that it's just a narrower view. But it's still accurate. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see, we have Leonidas II. Leonidas II? Maybe is what it's 
one of those. Are all Norskin tribes allied slash worshipping the Dark Brothers or some version of them? And if so, why do they not join the Chaos Hordes? So, essentially, essentially yes, 99% of the time. And they pretty much always do join up for a good old Chaos Invasion. Otherwise, they would be completely wiped out. The reason they don't always run around with the Chaos Hordes is because running around with the Chaos Horde is dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. Uh, most peop most regular humans, which Norskins are a little different than regular humans, they're typically built bigger. But they can't handle the lifestyle that Warriors of Chaos live as they're wandering around the Waste and the Realm of Chaos. You know, we're talking about individuals who don't eat, don't sleep, don't have a lot of natural body functions anymore, and they live only to serve the gods. You can't just join them. You would be torn apart by the entro entropic energies that's wandering around the Chaos Waste, or be torn apart by ludicrously more powerful individuals than you, um, and sacrifice to the gods, or demons, or, you know, whatever. So, generally, it's better to stay out of the Chaos Waste unless you have a specific goal in mind, uh, or you're just completely insane. Then it's probably a fine place for you. Moving on to Megiru 3. Okay, Megiru 3 to Sama. <laughs> if we could take all the entirety of the Empire and have them fight the entirety of the Norskins, who would win? Uh, Empire. Not even close. Not even remotely close. Norska would get so bodied, it wouldn't even be funny. Like, <laughs> it would not stand a chance. Nasty69 Luigi. Are there any notable mutations unique to Norska? For example, skin wolves? And are there any notable characters of these types? Also, one more question. How are skin wolves created, and do they hold any special significance for Norskins besides being battlefield commodities? Basically, just want to know about skin wolves. So, I would not say there's any truly unique mutations to Norska. Rather, the Norskins just have the highest concentration of mutations that we're exposed to. Those humans who live just as close to the Realm of Chaos in the Far East are very similar in terms of having werefolk and other such uh, alterations. In fact, uh, you can even go pretty far south and still find them. There are skin wolf clans known to live in the bone hills of Estalia and hidden in certain parts of the Badlands and even among the Kurgan and the Hung. As for what creates them, it's a very particular mutation that infects the blood of humans that are born, typically. Um, though it can be, obviously being a mutation, you can gain it later in life, but many of these people are born with it. And this mutation um, lurks as kind of like a defect or a poison, and when it triggers by either hun hunger or rage, Essentially, a beast will awaken inside of the human and literally tear itself out of their flesh in a gory spectacle. As they expand out of a body, this is why they're wrapped in ropes of torn human flesh and get their name, because their former body is literally draped all over them because they burst out of a their prior body. Other than that, um, they're really just shock troops, uh, traditionally. CA did expand the role of the Skin Wolves by adding in the Werekin Hero and Armored Skin Wolves. Though it should be noted that in Chaos featured cultures like the Kurgan, Hung, and Norskins, Werekin or people with significant mutations, uh, especially Skin Wolves, are considered very blessed and are revered and respected by their fellows. It, it's, it's considered a mark of the gods being impressed with or interested in you. So generally it's considered a good thing. Truck and ride along, we've got Party Dean 17 here who asks, Hey Lore Master, fantastic video. I do have a question similar to one asked for the Beastman QA. What other monsters do the Norskins utilize or fight that are not used in their total war Warhammer armies? Other question is, are demons ever found wandering Norska? If they are, how do Norskins treat an occurrence? So, uh, if I tried to list all of the horrible monsters that lurk around Norska and Troll Country, I would be sitting here talking for probably a few hours at the very least. Just know that pretty much any creature of chaos they deal with. Often enough, in addition to the various monsters of the sea that they hunt with a passion. I mean, we're talking everything from chimeras to manacores to chaos dragons to whatever. 
As for demons, they do pop up in Norska from time to time and are always considered extremely sacred figures. Demons are speakers for the gods and are actively worshipped in many cases. To encounter one would be considered quite the blessing and honor if the Norskans in question survive the encounter. Hopefully those answer your questions. Uh, Philia Bong, hopefully I said that right, asks, Can beastmen control creatures normally aligned with other races, like for example the Arachnorok spiders, and for Norska, are there people similar to Norskans near the south pole of the Warhammer world? And do Norskins have the equivalent to a real-world shield ball formation the Vikings were famous for, or are they mostly just mindless berserkers? That was a bunch of questions wrapped up in a small amount of text. So, technically this is a Norska Q&A, but I'll go ahead and talk about the Beastmen one real quick. Beastmen struggle to control non-chaos-aligned creatures, but the shamans can do it through magic. That's quite literally what the spell Traitor Kin uh, does, for instance. It's a spell that makes the beasts mounted by various races suddenly attack their riders. This spell can prove exceptionally dangerous if riding something like a demigriff or a dragon. But beastmen do have a strong affinity with many monsters, but generally they have to at least be a chaos aligned or one of the more violent species for the beastmen to really have a good shot of controlling them. Back to the Norskins, so there are no Norskin equivalents near the South Pole. It's too far separated from the rest of the world, and the only inhabitants there are demons, beastmen, and supposedly a hybrid race of the two known as demon kin. As for the final question, Norskins don't fear death at all, and exult in the heat of battle, so they don't consider the use of formations very useful. It's a horde of berserkers 99% of the time. You know, if your goal is to seek glorious death in combat, you're not going to be someone that drills hardcore formations and defensive battle lines and trying to essentially uh, prolong your life as much as possible. You know, that's not... They, they fight as hard as they can, but at the end of the day, they're seeking glory. You know, much like how you wouldn't expect to see a slayer... Um, matching up in a defensive formation or wearing heavy plate armor or something because their goal is to die gloriously in battle you know they're crazy <laughs> but it's part of their culture so take that as you will moving forward we have steven r which says are there trolls uh, are the trolls related to the giants why did they center on areas predominated by chaos so um trolls are their own distinct species Giants are inbred descendants of an ancient race known as the Sky Titans, which were giants that were much bigger, much more intelligent, and were incredibly powerful. Um, they lived a really long time ago. Uh, as for trolls, they can be found anywhere in the world except Ulthuan, and are basically just a hyper-invasive species in that they adapt as insanely well to literally any environment. Thanks to their legendary regeneration and notable ability to digest anything from, like, stone to metal. Like, they, they can basically function anywhere, so long as it's not lava, you know, something that would cause their regeneration to short circuit. Um, so, it, it's not that they center in chaos locations, it's that you can just find them anywhere. Um, in chaos locations, all of that mutation that's lingering in the air, where it might cause most creatures to die from suffering or open sores or wounds or just corruption trolls adapt and they can regenerate any damage done to them by warping energies so they basically feed off of it which is why chaos trolls are in particular quite terrifying and nasty uh, hopefully that answers your question i have no mouth and i must meme that's a good name too uh comes to us with a question of Norskins have a unit called skin wolves that are basically werewolves and in Kislev uh, is I think I've heard of a special group of humans that can also turn into wolves. Is there any relation? And the second question is what do beastmen think about skin wolves? Do they even know the skin wolves exist? So to the first question uh, No, there's actually a very big difference between skin wolves and creatures that are known legitimately as wares. Skin wolves are bloodthirsty abominations that were created by a specific mutation in their blood, 
whereas wares one might find in the Northern Empire or Kislev are often blessed by gods such as Ulrich or Ursin, who's the Kislev uh, bear god. One very specific ware species we've known for quite a long time are a race known as the Children of Ulrich, who can transform into something best described as a werewolf, while legend says that the mightiest priest of Ursin can assume the form of a massive bear using prayer. So, they certainly exist, but they don't bear any relation to skin wolves. Those are like completely two separate sides of the aisle. Moving down to the Beastmen question, uh, we answered this, I think, last video, but Beastmen are very likely aware of skin wolves and just don't like them very much, mainly because they turn back into humans at the end of a battle, so they're not really Beastmen material. Zargu's Hedwaka comes to us with, How have the notable Norskin settlements been able to survive? P.S. I love your Q&As, hope you keep on making them. Thanks, we will keep on doing these, because they're uh, fun, and it's a good way for me to just kind of get out some pretty good lore dumps. So we essentially talked about this earlier, but basically the Norskins have some rare but very fertile fields to grow crops and have some of the best hunters in the world, both on horseback and at sea. Plus they will actively raid for anything they cannot achieve otherwise, um, especially for like thralls that are used to till the fields and mine and do other tasks that the Norskins themselves uh, maybe don't have the time to do, you know, because they're all out hunting and raiding and such. And the final question for both the Q&A Part 3 and the series as a whole comes to us from Drago, who asks, Was there a Norskin warrior who had a frost worm as a battle mount? So, no. Frost worms are seemingly a new creation by Creative Assembly. As I can't say for certain if they're the same or even related to the infamous ice drakes that roamed the mountains of Norska and Kislev. No Norskin has ever mastered a dragon for his own. Only the most powerful of Chaos Lords and Chaos Sorcerer Lords have even a hope of striking a bargain with such powerful monsters, being the Chaos Dragons. The Ice Drakes, for those of you who aren't aware also, the Ice Drakes, the only things we really know about them is that they are kind of the titans of those northern primordial environments. Like in Norska or Kislev, if an Ice Drake awakens and becomes active, it is a bad news moment for everybody. Because these guys can like vomit out avalanches essentially and are very, very big. So I don't think they're the same thing as frostworms. Frostworms seem to be almost like a lesser spe uh, species, and plus frostworms have two heads. Obviously because they're a reskin of the Chaos Dragon, but that would indicate them as an actually Chaos species, because only Chaos Dragons have two heads. Natural dragons only have a single head. And to my knowledge, Ice Drakes are a single-headed entity. But um, I think ice drakes are more of a natural species, while ice drakes are, or sorry, uh, frost worms are a chaos created species. Which is how the Norskins are presumably able to strike a deal with them and have really any hope of binding them to their surface. And that's also why in the game, Creative Assembly seemed aware of this, and the frost worm has the lowest stat line of any of the dragon creatures to my knowledge i'm pretty sure that's the case is that among all the dragons it has the worst stat line so in any event um thanks everyone for all of your wonderful questions i really uh, appreciate it we got a ton for norska you know if this had been a regular q a video it would have been easily um about an hour and 30 minutes so um let me know what you guys thought down in the description about this breaking up into parts Obviously, the main reason we did this was to try seeing if it functions better on the YouTube algorithm and performs better financially, and I won't have that. A lot of people have asked, and I just want to let everyone know that I won't have the data on that and for probably another two weeks, because obviously I have to wait for this video to be around for a while so that it can compete with like the other Q&A series that are much longer. So we'll see how it all turns out and which of them performs better and we'll move forward from there. But in any event, uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you didn't catch the prior two videos, they're in the Q&A playlist and you can watch them all together. 
or uh, check out any of the other Q&As we've had. We've done most of the New World races already, and we've also hit up, uh, I think, the Greenskins. So we still have a bunch of Old World races to go. And next up on the docket is the Dwarves. So if you want to have your question, any question, any question about the Dwarves answered, feel free to post it down in the comment section below. Or going into the description, there will be a link to my Discord channel and my Twitter account. And you can either tweet me your question or you can go on to my Discord, go to the Q&A channel, and uh, post your questions in there. So thank you all for watching. I will catch you next time. Have a great night, guys.